In the previous movie, I took you to the point where we can draw the character, color him, put gradients and highlights. Now, a very quick note on another technique that we can use to help us control all of this information. So I'm going to get rid of the Alien 3. I'm going to get rid and I'll keep Alien 2. Let's get rid of the... Actually, we'll keep that one for now. Why not? So we have Alien 2 here. And we have our inked character with all the layers. We can select all of these and then right click and convert to a smart object. Essentially, this is turned into a symbol. So if you're familiar with Animate CC or other software that nests all of those layers inside another object, this is it. If I double click on this, all of our layers are still here, including the ink layer. Uh, let's close that. I can duplicate this. And if I make a change in this one, it makes the change in both. So it's great if you're using an image that's going to require crowds or other objects where there'll be a lot of repeats. So I like the, the uh, shadow, so let's just bring that back. You know what, maybe just take it down a bit and then we're out. Let's call this one Ink 2 or actually Alien. Call it A and Alien B. There's a wonderful feature called Smart Filters. And this is the kind of thing that might save you a lot of time. So if we right click on this and go blending options, let's make a color overlay. And I'm going to pick like a, just a different color completely, like orange. And we'll give it a blend mode like multiply. Let's just keep going. Pick something better than that. Hey, that's good. So color dodge is great. And I can bring it down just a bit. So now it seems like we have two. These can be switched on or off. It's not destructive. Any smart filters that you apply to the uh, smart object, you'll be able to switch them on and off without affecting anything inside. So if you, you have like a flock of birds and you want to make them slightly different tones, if you have like a crowd scene and you want the figures and the, to use the, maybe the same five figures and scale them, then you can do that and you can change the blend mode. So I can go in here, for example, go into effects, and make this one darker. As you can see, I'm just bringing them down now. So I could pick black and make them darker and darker and darker or even lighter. And with the blend modes too, I can do a lot. The other thing about this too that's great, if I go Control T and I scale them down, I haven't damaged anything. I can scale them back up again and there's no pixelation, which is what would happen were you to do this without using a smart object. So smart objects allow you to have a high resolution data preserved inside the smart object itself. I found this one just invaluable. Um, so you know, again, if I wanted to have like a big perspective scene, let me just flip one of these guys so it looks like I've done more work than I actually have. And this time what I'll do is I'll go into color overlay. We'll make it black and that should look like he's more shadowy. Color dodge isn't good for this. Let's go to multiply. This guy's in the shade. If I had like a big perspective scene and they're inside the flying saucer or whatever, you get the idea. So if I drew like four or five of these uh, little alien guys, then I would be able to change the color, change the, the size. And if I ever wanted to make one alteration, all I have to do is go into Smart Object and I'm good to go. If I did want to make an absolute change, another great feature of this is I can right click on this and go New Smart Object via Copy. And now I've got a new version completely called C. And now I can change this guy completely. Like I can take the shadows off or let's just make it worse. There we go. Now any change I make to this will be different. So. I'm going to do something really destructive here. <laughs> Edit, transform, distort. So just so you can see the point. And now we have this guy here distorted. It doesn't affect the other two. It just affects him. So let's get rid of that. So those are our smart objects and better still smart filters, which are tremendous. And if you're working in an older version of Photoshop, I'm not sure that they had uh, smart filters in that one. That's it. That's a very quick overview of how I draw my cartoon characters, how I mask them, and give myself complete control at every step of the process. So if I ever want to make a change, if you have a picky client or a picky boss, or you're picky and you're, you can't quite decide, it's a fantastic way of doing it because then you can change at any step in the process without taking too much of a penalty.